Good morning guys. Uh, today is a day that I'm finally flying to London. They literally changed my flight for the seventh time just the other day. So I almost thought I wasn't going to go and I've been waiting for this date for the longest time. I actually was meant to fly in late December and they cancelled my flight two days before I was meant to fly and then they've continually cancelled my flights like a week here and then two weeks later there and rescheduled and so on and now I mean it's May I finally had a date and then they literally the other day cancelled it I got in touch with them and then they booked me on another airline so I'm actually flying tonight so COVID tests are done I'm busy packing behind me and uh, yeah tonight I fly, finally fly to the UK I'm having my final steak in South Africa because I know that I'm not necessarily going to eat steak in the UK. That's what you want to see, not detected. Right, so I'm finally packed up and I'm ready to go. I've got a limited amount of luggage that I can take. Uh, I've literally packed up my life into one 23 kilogram suitcase and uh, carry-on uh, luggage and my laptop bag and that is me going to the UK and starting my life again. to London. didn't record too much of today because it was quite a difficult experience um, getting through the red list and to a hotel and everything so it was just a long day on my feet and I'm totally exhausted 
but I'm gonna make a follow-up video and I will, I will try and capture as much of this quarantine experience as possible for people but um yeah I, I actually officially only start uh, quarantine tomorrow so I will start documenting the quarantine part tomorrow and get into the details of everything I went through and everything that you're going to go through and, and how my experience goes so maybe you can learn in case you're going to do uh, the quarantine because you're coming from a redless uh, country so yeah I am exhausted I just don't have the personality right now to uh, yeah really start getting into the details of what's going on and the whole thing but yeah, I see this as such a huge opportunity to design a better experience and get designers into companies to th think about what people are experiencing um, as they go through all these processes that are being enforced on them in order for them to be able to return to their home countries or travel and everything else. and. It's, yeah, I, I'm honestly dead confused as to why companies aren't investing more in a better customer experience, regardless of where you're coming from or who you are, whatever. I would think that it's the one differentiator when the competitive field is so even lately and, you know, everybody's going to undercut each other in order to get an edge. I don't understand why. They couldn't just give better service and even if there's no choice i just feel it's the right thing to do in London and uh, lunch has just arrived barbecue chicken panini some fresh fruit a salad that I won't eat Fanta I won't drink but I'll eat this Milky Way there's no veg on this panini I'm gonna grab the egg out of the salad even though I don't eat anything else I can use the protein so far I haven't had a lot of luck with the food. They skipped serving me dinner last night and they almost skipped serving me lunch now. And uh, yeah, I have to keep calling reception and ask where my food is. So I'm not sure what's going on. The room service hit me last night. Oh no, they didn't have my order. So when I spoke to the front desk last night, they said to me that they had received it. And uh, so yeah, somebody was meant to sort it out, but obviously that hasn't happened because lunch was skipped today until I actually had to chase it up. But uh, other than that, so far so good. So, I ordered a SIM card through Amazon Prime and uh, yeah, that's pretty quick. It's my first Amazon Prime package and it seems pretty cool. And I got myself an unlimited uh, three, I don't know if it's three mobile, three whatever, 5G ready SIM card for while I'm here. Um, and it costs a fraction of what uh, data would cost you back in South Africa. So they actually remembered to send me dinner for a change. Chocolate tart thing, pie with potatoes, which looks quite delicious. And then the juice, which I probably won't drink. It's 
weird to see in 8 p.m. sunset. We wouldn't see that in South Africa in spring. There's uh, plenty of water, as you can see. Good morning. It's uh, breakfast time. They give you two choices for breakfast. And uh, I chose to have an English breakfast rather than a continental breakfast. It's the same thing every day, I think. It comes in a box like this. This mess over here, which is sausages, bacon, egg, what looks like a chicken nugget. I could be wrong, I maybe need to taste it. I didn't yesterday. And some baked beef. Warm croissant, some yogurt, some fruit salad, fresh juice, some sauces and some jam. Yeah, today I'm gonna try and break down what it takes to actually get from South Africa to the UK, everything I went through, all the documents you need and just how to be better prepared than I was. So, still trying to get some exercise in. Uh, trying to find out if they have a fitness center and I think we might be able to train there twice a day, but just waiting to hear back from the reception. So this is my, is it PCR, whatever, test. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but apparently there's instructions inside. So let's get started. Big vibes. Look. I'm up by my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit looks like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Here goes nothing. Peace, I'm so after school special. She brainy, but them jeans looking like paint. I got a blessing. Niggas talk a whole lot, know it damn well. They really can't press us. I notated on leaflet. I'm really up a few levels with it. Like way, way out the way from them. Can't see me, you can't meddle with us. E and J in my Earl Grey hood brunched up with the cheese eggs and a dumb face. No stunner shade still turned up. Then had it pop in in broad day. That's Avi. Flower child from the sun rays, but I run fade. Got a punch drunk. Ready for collection. Lunch time. Got some soup. Cheddar mushroom croak. Okay, I don't know how you say that. Is it like cro crochet, croquet? I don't know. But yes, it's like a sandwich. Sweet chili crisps. Pixie Max, which I won't drink. An apple, which is going to be a welcome treat. Bread roll. Okay, so what you're going to need in order to travel from a red list country like I did, and I will use my reference from South Africa, are the following. First thing you need to do is book your flight. Second thing you need to do is arrange your quarantine hotel. It's uh, 1,750 pounds and it's all inclusive. It's your hotel, it's the food, it's the COVID tests, the two COVID tests that you need to do, transport from the airport. You need to have a COVID test 72 hours before you get into the UK. And if you go via Germany, for example, you need to have a COVID test 48 hours before you get it into Germany. But what I would recommend is that you also um, be made aware that there is an option to have a blood test, I think it is, at the airport, which gives you immediate results. But you do need to have a PCR test for both countries. I think it's around 
24, 48 hours before, you need to fill in a passenger locator form. And you need to do all of this and make sure at the end of it, you've got a document that has three pages that's got a huge QR code on it and some information that they require at the airport before they will allow you onto a flight. So make sure you get that. When you've booked your hotel, you'll get a CTM form, which is a receipt. It's a PDF document that you need to have. And then the other thing is you need your hotel information. I would encourage you to print all the stuff out, have all these documents ready to be shown. Nobody takes them from you, so you only need one copy, but I would always take a spare just in case. Okay, my recommendation is that you get to the airport early because there's a lot to do. The first thing, if you're flying out of South Africa, is there's no more international departures. You need to go to the domestic departures to check yourself in. You've got to have the right documentation at this stage. It would be the CTM form. It would be the uh, passenger locator form, and it would be your COVID test as well as a valid passport. There's really not much open, so there, there really isn't a point in having your family join you there. It's probably best to just drop you off so that you can run around and do your thing because it's quite stressful. Once you're ready to go through customs, you need to fill in a form just outside and there's no signage for this. So it's you've got to just figure this out. You need to fill in a form that is a healthy valuation, which the South African government require. They will then screen you, do your temperature, screen you. You will then go through customs, show them your passport and have your baggage run through their scanning machines. I flew to Frankfurt. They required you to have your passenger locator form and your COVID test before you were really even allowed into the airport. Like as you came off the plane, they checked you out. They wanted to see your passport. They wanted to check that you're healthy and then they let you walk through. From there, you go through the process of going through their customs, even though you're just in transit. You've got to make sure that all of your liquids are together. Otherwise, it's a hassle because when you get there, they basically make you take all the liquids out and put it in a zipped bag, which they can give you, but it's probably just easier for you to just do it yourself. Just keep all of your liquids in one thing and you give it to them in one of the bins that they'll give you. You give it to them separately so that they can run your stuff through their machine and then it doesn't delay you any further. I had one or two bottles of cream that I didn't even think of and it meant that they made me open my suitcase and start pulling stuff out and everything, which can be a hassle. Big ups to the Germans who seem to be in such great spirit. Like it just, just, there was laughing and it just felt very human and such a lovely place. And I'm definitely going to make sure that I go to Germany soon. Okay. Once you get to the UK, before you get pushed into a queue or whatever, yeah, yeah you're going to be standing around for such a long time. It's probably best to have comfortable shoes, a bottle of water, a snack, and you've gone to the bathroom. Sanitize your hands because this process gets really messy. The first thing they make you do is to queue to be able to go through customs. It's a long process. Next, you've actually got to deal with customs, but if everything's in order, you should be fine. From there, they yeah, put you in a red list queue for your hotel. This took nearly four hours of just standing and not knowing what was going on. There was zero social distancing. And you, if you needed the bathroom, you were in trouble because you would likely lose your spot in the queue. And so they were just bunching people up and just pushing us around this endless queue that zigzagged all the way to the front for them to purely check your passport and your booking information. From there, someone escorts you to get your luggage. You then wait in another queue for about an hour where you'll wait to be transported. So you wait there, you then get 
taken through to your bus. The bus then takes you and other passengers in nearby hotels and they basically drop people off at their respective hotels. They take your passport into the hotel, validate that you're at the correct place. Then they come and call you. Somebody escorts you from there into your room where you are then quarantined for 10 days after the day that you arrive. So that's pretty much what you need and, and the process that you go through. It is pretty exhausting. There's a ton of information that you've got to fill in once you get to the hotel. But uh, yeah, if you do this right, it'll be a hell of a lot less painful. And if you constantly, like I did, had to keep opening up email programs and finding the right emails and things like that, and it's quite a big waste of time. Take the advice, print everything out, and you should be golden. My name is Craig Jamison. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. Stay